I would like to talk a little bit about Easy E and the whole transition from you know Easy E rolling with Lonzo and then leaving Lonzo for uh, Jerry Heller. Can you give us kind of a background? I mean, did you see it coming? You know, what was leading up to that whole you know transition from Easy just well, bouncing? You know, um, when I, at that, at one point in time, man, um, I was doing it all. Um, Promoting shows, making records, uh, recording everything, and Easy was kind of hanging around. And he had, Easy tried some of the same things I did. He was Easy used to promote shows. In fact, he had a um, production company called High Power Productions, and uh, he it later became one of his production companies for his record companies. And I was the go-to guy. You know, I was I was the person that had um, the experience, nightclubs, and whatever the case may be. So when he wanted to do something. He'd ask me a question. I'd give him the answer. And when he wanted to get into the music business, um, Dre kind of got him interested in the music business because he saw I was making money in the music business. And uh, he asked me some questions. I took him to I took him to my graphic designer, uh, Lirad Davis, who made the Ruthless logo. I took him to my lawyer, Ken Clavins, who made the first Ruthless contract. And later he wanted to meet Jerry Heller because um, y- Yella and Dre had pumped Jerry Heller up so much after we got our uh, our um, our CBS contract that Jerry had found about six grand that was owed to us from the union. And when Jerry found that money, he he just he was like a god for Yella and Dre, and easy. I mean, uh, uh, Dre had pumped him up so much he wanted to meet him, and I made the connection. And, you know, again, that connection is always uh, a story of uh, hip-hop folklore because in Jerry's book, Easy paid me some money, like a 1000 bucks, just to meet Jerry, which that wasn't the case. Um, Easy owed me some money for studio time, and he gave me, he, to bribe me to, get, to expedite the meeting with Jerry, he paid me what he owed me plus a little something-something on the side. And... Uh, you know, and Jerry made me think he he wanted it so bad he gave me a thousand dollars. Now he paid me what he owed me and gave <laughs> me a little bonus. But you know, it all depends on who tells the story. You know how how it's going to come out. And I didn't think much of the connection at first, man. There was no reason for me to think that a Jewish dude from the valley would uh ever uh really find uh a guy like uh, Easy. Although nothing wrong with Easy, he just was different. He was different from uh from me, Rudy, Egypt. You know, we all were. Um, a little bit older, we were. We all had business experience, and we all wore suits, carried briefcases, and could count our own money. And maybe that was made us a little less attractive in the long run. Okay, uh, Easy kept his money in the sock. He was a former dope dealer, and I didn't think much of the connection. And when they hit it off, I was kind of blown away that they um, they were able to work together the way they were. And shortly after that, there was no need for Lonzo. And I noticed, um, I started hearing a lot of unnecessary stuff at one point in time, man. I think that's kind of what um, what really uh, made me suspicious of the relationship because all of a sudden, I'm the worst guy in the world. Mm. You know, and everybody was kind of um, turned against me. My house went from being the go-to spot for everybody on West Coast to just me and me and my BMW. I mean, it was dead. I mean, <laughs> I had a serious, a serious dose of em- empty nest syndrome. I mean, it wouldn't be nothing for me to have 10, 15 people at my house on a daily basis. It was like being in that movie with uh, with um, uh, my Tina Turner, how everybody be at the house hanging out and chilling, listening to music and stuff. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody was gone. I had I had the studio. My place was the after party spot. After the club, we come to my place and hang out all week. We'd be at the pad, you know. Dre be in the studio, or um, I had a roommate who was in, in a group with D Barnes, Rose, and she was always around here. Uh, DJ Pooh was always around here. Uh, Coolio, you know, everybody was around here because I was the one that had the uh, had the studio, and I, I was the I was that guy at that time. And all of a sudden, I went to a serious dose of empty nest. And I always suspected that was because if any other questions were asked, was asked of me, I would give answers that might not be uh, conducive to the current uh, climate, put it that way. Okay. Mm. So, 
that's was that's when I and that's when I kind of realized my guys have been turned against me. Yeah. Do you do you know or do you, what do you think was specifically said? I don't think we ever discussed that. Well, you know, I never got the specifics. I just know that um, we had a bad our last five or six months of McCullough was really horrible because McCullough was yeah. holding money. Um, he wouldn't pay us for house calls and uh, the CIA album, the, the, the Stereo Crew album that we had done. And uh, CIA, I'm sorry, it was CIA then. Uh, CIA and the, and the uh, we had done the EP, CIA and Wrecking Crew did the EP over in McCullough. And McCola was holding the money for those EPs um, against Wrecking Crew, a crew cut record return. Okay. When we left, went to CBS, McCola recalled all the records that we'd ever made the album, the cassettes, house call, I mean, ju surgery and juice. Those were the first two out, first two uh, projects we did in McCola. So he, I guess he got himself, caught himself getting back at us. By recalling everything in, he gave me a bill for like seventy five, eighty thousand dollars for pressing. But what he didn't tell me, what I didn't, what I didn't find out till later on, the same bill he gave me for uh, for pressing, he was selling on the other side. Okay, and I didn't realize he was still selling the records until I went and took the records. And I went and took them. What he 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 gave me a number that was higher. He gave me a number on paper that was a lot higher than. The, the, rec the, the records that he actually had on hand. So wow. then I realized he was selling them because I had I had my people at McCola and they said, Don, Don never stopped selling your records. He just got some returns in and was trying to get you to pay double for them. But this was after we'd already broken up. Okay? So because we didn't get paid for that, Lonzo don't pay nobody. In fact, in, on Michelet's record, um, she said something about how, how, I didn't, how I didn't pay her. And that was never the case, you know. And it was funny, man, because when you were working with uh with cats that would spend money, you give a guy fifteen thousand dollars on Monday, it'd be broke on Friday. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't that you I wasn't paying you, just you spent the money so fast you didn't feel it. And mm -hmm. I bought a house and I bought a car and built a studio, and you could see where my money went. And nobody had a drug problem, and that was the funny part. Nobody had drug problems. They just went through money in their own cars, way. girls, cars, girls, motels, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. So, uh, but when all the smoke was cleared, Lonzo was the bad guy. Yeah. Huh. So you know, I just had to deal. Had to deal with that, and uh, you know, I, it, it 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 hurt me for a while, um, professionally and also personally, man. Because I'm like, dude, you know, at this time, at this time, we didn't have social media. All you had was cats running their mouths. Okay. Yeah. And the word is, Lonzo don't pay people. And, oh man, it was it was hard to get somebody in the studio. It was hard to do a whole lot of stuff. It took me a while to explain explain my situation to people who would fuck with me again. Mm. Telephone, telegram, tell a nigga. Tell a nigga, boy. And, but that's all we had. Yep. And that made for a whole different situation, man. So.